What's going down? It's the big ball up, baby. I got some news for y'all. There's only one big ball in the world of podcasts, and it's my boys, Matt and Mooney. That's right. They the triple B VIPs throwing it down every week. Food, music, sports on sub facts. That's right. I got to give a huge shout out, man, from the big baller himself and my boy Chico de Oro. Yes, Chico de Oro. That's my boy, my friend. That's right. You know how he gets down. Big baller's got to hang together. Big baller brand is in the building, and you know how we gets down. Again, go check out Matt and Mooney. They doing their thing. Sub facts in the building. But big ball is up, baby, and I holla. Hello, and welcome to Sub Facts. I'm your host, Matt. I'm here with my partner in crime, Mooney. What's up, Mooney? What's going down, dude? Oh, it's been a great week. It's been a great week for the show, sir. Oh, I know. Like, new heights. Yeah, so, folks, we've been really pushing our YouTube presence um, we've been doing a lot of things. We're going to continue to do a lot of things in YouTube. And we made it to a certain level to where I think we're big time now. I think we're we're, we're getting... big time is a little bit. OK, much. well, we're almost there. But either way, we got to a point where we can officially have ads on our stuff, which is great um, because I, quite frankly, I've been jealous of those. I get annoyed when I see the ads on of other course. people's stuff. But nothing made me happier than when I saw an ad on ours. Okay. So, like, we'll eventually make two cents in, like, next year, by next year or something like that. But either way, it's a, it's a, it's a new step for our show. Two cents. Yes. It's a whole – actually, you know what's funny is there's a whole thing. And we – at this point, I think we've made three cents. So three it's like, cents. what up? So either way, it's kind of funny. Um you know, thank you folks who have been Do we taking, keep making three cents now or do we is that all we ever make? I don't know how the whole thing works. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But um thank you folks for helping us get to the next yes, level. Thank you. Um please continue to support and we'll you know try to hit the stratosphere. As yes. They say. Yes. So um with that being said, um make sure I hit the right button. Take it. Now that we're extra professional. Awesome. We gotta hit the right buttons. Love it. Warm up. Uh, Boom. What's up, Brian? Hey guys, how are you? What's good, going on? Good. Time for the warm up. Yes, it is. Uh first question. Uh this is a good one. Fans at a recent Blackpink concert. You know who Blackpink is. You've done several. Oh, well, of course uh, we do. It helped us get to where yeah, we the are. Part of the, uh, the pinks or whatever. The blinks. Yeah, the blinks. So uh, they recently had a concert in Singapore, and their fans at the concert were angry because security was not helping them with other fans that were unruly and doing things like holding up like this picture holding up fans in the air that were like blocking their oh, views. Oh yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. I hate those people. And, and then Taylor Swift recently yelled at a security card at one of her con concerts for being too aggressive with her fans. And so uh, the question is, are performers responsible for their fans experience at their shows to the point of making sure security is doing their jobs properly, whether they're doing their jobs too aggressively or not enough? I have a ton of thoughts on this. Uh, I mean, I only have really one. I mean, I th I don't think it's the performer's responsibility, but that performer should have a manager and or a handler that's looking at the crowd and looking at things going down and seeing how the security guards and or uh, bouncers are treating the fans and making sure everything is kosher. If they think see things are getting out of control, then there may be like a hand signal they give to Taylor or Blackpink and say, hey, we're going to stop the show if, you know, you guys can't mm -hmm. calm down. Yeah, there, there's a couple aspects to this. Um, Taylor on one and I did. I saw the video and I saw the reaction of like the person who um, she stopped the security guard from messing with and they gave their side of the story. And, you know, the lady's like, oh, I was just dancing with my friends and blah, blah, blah. And the security guard was, you know, just had a day, basically. The problem, there's, there's, it's kind of twofold, right? If Taylor doesn't say anything, as if the band doesn't say anything, 
they could be liable for something that happens. For instance, Travis Scott recently, you know, last year, I think they had, he had a big performance and somebody died in the crowd or got severely injured. And he is the front page. His name is what gets thrown out right. at a Travis Scott concert. This happened. Of course. So there is, there's a little bit of onus on the, the actual performer if they see something to say something. But on the other hand, I think there's a lot of people to the baby metal, not to, to or to the black pink thing. I think there's a lot of a holes in the crowd that feel that they're uber entitled. Like I spent X amount of money. I can do whatever I want, you know, where people dance into other people, right? They get carried away or the people hold with up the, the big fans. Like the you fans. see here. I went to a, I went to a Bon Jovi concert hold up years, signs. years ago and some, a hole in front of me and I had like floor seats, good seats, which I paid a lot of money for. Somebody held up like the scarf from like, you know, European, wherever they are in Europe. Right. First of all, Bon Jovi doesn't care where you're from. No, he doesn't. You don't need your scarf. He doesn't care. It makes no difference where you're from. Absolutely. And he doesn't even see you, by the way. Yeah. Like I'm very cognizant when I go to concerts of people around me because like I know if there's like a shorter person behind me, I'll try to do what I can to make sure that their experience is just as good as like mine. Right. But there are a ton of a-holes that just don't care. And I do think security should go in and say like this, this girl's like, Oh, just dance and have a good time. Well, if you're dancing and you're impeding on other people's space, then you need to be stopped. Absolutely. If you're running into other people and you know, and mm -hmm. you're inconveniencing another person's good time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You need to go. Yeah. Or at I, least be talked to first. But I think also, you know, the artist needs to also like the Taylor Swift also needs to understand what's really going on. Is it something that, you know, because some people do pick on security unruly. Like I was at like Rage Against the Machine used to go off on like police officers and stuff. Those are also the same people doing security. And I have no sympathy for that. You yeah. know, where it's like, don't pick on security just because you can and you think it's going to get you noticed. So there's a it, there's a whole thing there because it there, we've got a bunch of a-holes in the crowd. Security has to do what they have to do. Mm -hmm. But also you understand that the artist, on the other hand, is the name that gets seen. Like Taylor Swift gets, like if she didn't say anything and something happened, then her name is getting blasted no matter what. So it's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird situation. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, but, but I think the, the, I don't know if it's the performer's job. I think it might be someone in, you know, someone who has to watch the crowd. Yeah, I the think the performer shouldn't be concerned about the crowd. In this case, I do think Taylor was probably more in the wrong because if the girl was just dancing or whatever, security has if the, she's impeding or whatever, then yeah, there's let the security just do their job. Yeah. Um if the guy or somebody like um Andy from Creative Underground has a video from the cult show where the lead singer stopped it because somebody got another person in a chokehold. Like Jesus. if there, if there's a chokehold, yeah, you don't want the artist, holds. the yeah. artist does need to stop it and say, look, stop doing that. So it, it all depends on the situation. But I think in this case, I don't doubt that the girl was like, Oh, hey, look at me, you know, yeah. I'm at a Taylor Swift concert and impeding other people's space. And that play in that case, the security guard, you know, should we go, should Hey, something. Chill, sit, you know, come sit down. down. Calm and, down. And Taylor dance, probably did not into other people. Taylor probably did not need to intervene right. on that one. Yeah, she's trying to be who she is. Yeah. So anyway, she got fame. They all got fame. So <laughs> it is what it is. But <laughs> I do sympathize with the Blackpink fans because I hate people who do that stuff. Yeah, they hold up the big signs and yeah. the, you know, big so, objects, yeah. big hats. Yeah, it's like stupid. come on, just go enjoy the show. No one cares about you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, next question. Reddit users recently listed the best sitcom couples ever. Are any of them the best ever? Do you think another couple not on this list is the best? So they have, uh, they said some of the best couples ever were Homer and Marge Simpson, Sam Agreed. and Diane from Cheers, Agreed. Monica and mm -hmm. Chandler from Friends. Awful. Ki Despicable. Kitty and Red from That 70s Show. Don't even never oh, watched yeah, it. Nah, never really watched it, but yeah. Uh, April and Andy from uh, Parks and Rec. Awesome. Lillian. I'm not. I'm not 100 sold on them. 
I love really? them. Nah. No, they, they, I love those two characters separately, but together. Oh, I thought they were great. He was Burt Macklin, FBI, and she always played like that 1920s person. Awesome. Yeah. They used to role play a lot. Uh, Lily and Marshall from uh, How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, no one knows that. Uh, Morticia and Gomez Adams from The Adams Family. Mm-hmm. And Lois and Howe from, what is that? The, what was that show? Um, Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, Malcolm in the Middle. Malcolm in the Middle. Lillian Marshall. I know How I Met Your Mother. I know them too. That's uh, the redhead. I like her. I think, Allison Hannigan. Like, I think out of this group, I think Homer and Marge is probably the real best couple but i think what about like jim and pam from the office jim and pam are a superb couple like i think they that's a great call they should definitely be listed up there i don't know why they're not what about mork and mindy that's another solid one (laughs) although i don't think people on reddit even remember mork and mindy um (laughs) out of the ones there morticia and gomez were solid couple yeah out of the ones there i'm torn between homer and marge and sam and diane as the victor i really like sam and diane Okay. Um, Monica and Chandler are awful. That's when that show completely went like Jump the Shark was. It, 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 it I, oh god, disgusting. Actually, I could. It was show was unwatchable after they got together. So you're good. So how about this? You go Sam and Diane, and I'll go Homer and Marge and call it a day. Perfect. Boom. And then I'll try to think of others. Like there's got to be. What about um? What about like Growing Pains? What about like yeah. Family Ties? Those couples were great yeah i I don't know you you could argue either way how about this our listeners write in if we're missing a a couple um let us know your thoughts you let us know what the best um tv or sitcom couples are what about the jeffersons easy and george can't go wrong (laughs) and or the willis what about uh, about the spiritual couple uh who is it i'm coming i'm coming (laughs) i don't even know oh yeah yeah yeah. but that wasn't (laughs) <laughs> he was already like, Edith, or you know, but she was dead. I know. As I said, oh. spiritual. It, yeah, was yeah. it Edith, Esther, Esther? I okay, I'm coming. <laughs> but I think. Oh, well, you could do Edith and Archie Bunker. There you go. Um, yeah, there, there's so many couples you can do. I'm just kind of curious. So, folks out there, if you think there's a couple um, best sitcom couple, let us know. Write into subfactspodcast at gmail dot com. There's there's just way too like Fred. If you think about it, Fred and Wilma. Ooh, that that would, would be one of my tops. Yeah, or the they would make my top three. Well, they were based on the honeymooners too, so you can go. You know, Fred Ralph, and Wilma probably make and, my top three. Yeah, and then or Lucy and Desi. I would put your Andy and uh, not Andy and Jim whatever and uh, Jim and Pam. Yeah, Boom. I just didn't like Andy and uh, something that dynamic just didn't. Andy and April were the best part of that show. I did too. I agree. They, I agree separately, but. As together, I, I wasn't the big. I, I love them together. Yeah, they were great. Uh, and they weren't the best part of that show. Yeah, they were. Ron Swanson's the best part. Of uh, that show. He was pretty dope. That's true. Okay, next, All right, question. next question. I'm trying to move things on. Uh, which of these new burgers for May do you most want to try? So we have a White oh. Castle 1921 slider with ghost pepper cheese. We've got a oh, Burger, Burger King Whopper Melt. Nope. Outstanding. And we have a smash burger, smack, uh, smack and cheese burger. So it's got yes, mac and cheese 100%. on the burger. You wouldn't try the Burger King Whopper milk? Looks fantastic. No, because it's got some weird sauce on it. And I it's, also don't like the, I don't like when they use like Texas toast instead of a bun. What? It annoys me. Texas toast is fantastic. It is, and I don't. I just don't like it on a burger. It, oh my god, I love me. it on a burger. It, You're crazy. You no, know, it weirds me out. I, it, there's something that just creeps me out because it's not official. Um, to answer the question though, the White Castle slider, I would try that first. That I don't thing want looks ghost awesome. pepper. I don't want ghost pepper cheese. That thing looks money. But then I would go Burger King Whopper Milk next. I would of course try the mac and cheese burger. But I have a big problem with mac and cheese on anything, like even mac and cheese fried or mac really? and cheese. I like mac and cheese solo. I don't oh. think mac and cheese goes well with anything else. I would actually dip that burger into more mac and cheese and then eat it. And I'm, I could do the same, but I love mac and cheese by itself. See, I'm, with Moody on that. I'm with you on that. Oh, really? I'd be like, it, there's not enough cheese on this burger, sir. Can and, I get some And we've more? discussed this before and we've argued about it before. But I'm a baked mac and cheese guy. I don't like baked I'm mac not. and cheese. Nope. I, I lose you there. I'll eat it. 
I'll eat it, but don't get me wrong. I'm, that kind of mac and cheese looks pretty yeah, solid. Yeah, I'm 100% baked mac and cheese over gooey nope, mac and you cheese. You lost me there. Yep, agreed. Okay, cool. So we're we're polar opposites oh, on this Oh, wow, one. nice. I yes, don't know what people are saying. She's my hot. girl, Martha. So I was actually going to bring There's that up. There's not a chance I wouldn't do stuff. So we got a picture for those who aren't looking at this. Um, Martha Stewart is on the new cover of the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition at 81. I'd I'd be there. I'd you know <laughs> I'm you doing know, stuff. I've I've always had a soft spot for Martha, so it's it's like I, I'm not saying. Is there up, anything she can't do? No. Here's the thing. I'm not saying waking up next to her, you're gonna see the same woman you see on that cover. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Whatever she's gonna make the next day for breakfast is gonna wow your socks. Off. <laughs> Well, that's one of one of the things about Martha. And you know the sheets are going to be clean. True. One of the, you're going to be on like five thousand thread count sheets. But whatever. One of the things. One of the things that like I've always thought about Martha. Like the first time I saw Martha was like on her Martha Stewart show, like back in like the '90s or whatever. It was one of those flipping around. I'm like, oh, yeah. let's see what's up. In one segment, she baked like cookies or something. The next segment, she was literally shearing a sheep. Like she what? was literally, and what? I'm like, oh my gosh! And she then can do she, anything. She really then is. Then she was like gardening or whatever. And if you think about it, and this only looking at this picture just hit me, Martha is multi talented in everything, right? Absolutely, money, business, just everything. She should have been a president's wife. It's at some safe point. to she say that, president. like. It's safe to say, like if, I agree there. Agree. If you're in the if you're in the bedroom with Martha, she's probably got some tricks. She's probably got some Absolutely. tricks that no one ever knows. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and here's the thing: when if you're good as good as a baker or whatever, she, yeah, you know, she's gonna make sure you're happy. Yes, that's what right? I'm saying. She's got some. She'll be like, look, I I wrote the second volume of the Kama Sutra. And you know, yeah. it just hasn't kept. You know, and I here's some brownies to go with it. You, you're, exactly. you're at, oh my God! You're absolutely. Hey, you probably lost some calories during that little mm-hmm. escapade. Let's. Oh yeah, Don't I got think some she, brownies. She's probably got some like potato skins ready on the <laughs> nightstand, <laughs> like ready to go on the nightstand. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I know you like potato skins. Maybe some mott sticks. You know, what? there you go. What, does she have an air fryer underneath the bed? It pops out of you the wall like does. an oven wall, wall oven, like right there next to the bed. You know she oh, oven wall air fryer, like ding, yeah. Gee. <laughs> or like she's probably like, look, I know you have listened to the show a lot. I got some really good quality pizza ready to go. Oh my God. You what know. does she have a pizza oven in the bedroom? You know she she's got a brick oven pizza in her everything. house. What does she do? Like during the gymnastics in the bedroom, she hits a button and then the pizza starts to cook. So what I know about Martha, she likes to plan ahead. So she's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to rustle up one of those fat guys from Subfacts. I know they like pizza. So beforehand, I'm going to make some dough. She's probably got it all ready to go. Yeah, so then after she beds me or you, then she hits the like a button and then bling, your pizza shows up. Right. She, but you're, I was going to say five minutes before I say yes, she'll have to hit that button. So, cause it's going to be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Martha, I mean, you, you know, pictures are on a time clock now. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't need that. <laughs> okay. So anyway. Um, thank Either you. way, that was a that was probably better than the warm ups. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> way to go, Martha. <clears throat> Hem. Hem. So it's been um, interesting. Uh, it was awesome this weekend. I was meaning to tell you, and I'll just tell the people on the show. When we had Eyes of the Nile on our show a couple weeks ago, we asked them what their favorite um, tribute band was, and they mentioned the Four Horsemen. And as luck would, and that's a Metallica tribute. As luck would have it, they were playing the Tally Ho. And so I took my beautiful bride to see the Four Horsemen pre Mother's Day um, event. And um, what I would say, folks, if you ever get a chance, and they're like a national tribute band from what I can tell, 100% go. At this point, I think it's better than actually seeing Metallica, like the real Metallica live. And I've seen Metallica 15 times. I love them and I'm not going to disparage them as far as saying like, you know, you know, I'm not going to ever say they suck or anything like that. But as you know, I'm a fan of the black album and below. Yep. Anything after that. Exactly. Kind of sucks. So when you go to see Metallica now, 
you're going to see some good stuff because they play a lot of the old stuff, but then you're going to have to sit through a bunch of crap. And so we, when we went to go see this band, you never know what you're going to get. They played nothing but the Black Album in Below, and it gave me the old school vibes of like, uh, it woke me up to Metallica again. It literally gave me the like. And what's the band called? The Four Horsemen. Okay. It, it really, it gave me the, the vibe the hope. of like, oh my God, this is like the first time I saw Metallica. You know nice. what I mean? Like, so it, it was like, you know, nostalgic in a way. Oh my God. Yeah. I was like, I almost got teary eyed. I'm not going to lie. The, the lead singer sounds, he, he sounds enough like James. James is kind of an easier voice to kind of pull off. I think without being a vocal coach, um, the guy who played Kirk Hammett or whatever, amazing guitar like the the band themselves they they're they do album quality metallica is what they call it so they're literally note for note as the album has it gone that's awesome they played for like two and a half hours that's a long time dude and i don't know if i could go to a concert for two and a half hours. more importantly the ticket was 15 bucks 15 dollars for two and a half hours you go to like metallica is forcing you to buy two two nights right minimum 800 bucks oh my god I go to the tally ho right down the street and that's me driving and to New $15 York hours for one night, $15 for one night, two and a half hours. These and, of guys, all the, and of all the best songs that you like all the stuff. I didn't have to go. Oh no, not this song. Every song was like, I sang it. I think I sang every word. That's awesome. The wife loved it. We were all head banging. We were all 100% in it. And I'm telling you folks, if you're like me, they're better than seeing the real Metallica at this point. And so definitely look out for the four horsemen. Um, so yeah, I think they're better than Metallica at this point. Nice. All right. Well, kudos to them. Let's get them on the show. Save some money. I would think they're kind of national. So oh, they are. It okay, might be mind. harder to pull off, but well, we know people who, well, opened, we're national. That's true. We know people who opened up for them. So maybe we can make that happen. Boom. But um, yeah, thoroughly impressed the four horsemen. Um, like I said, no slight to the real Metallica, but they're sixties. Metallica's in their sixties. These guys are still younger and just belting knocking out. Nice. it out of the park. Awesome. Boom. And so, um, so then you know, as you know, um, tomorrow night I'm going to see Halloween. Yes, you are. And the opening band is Hammerfall. Can't wait. I am going to be a, ideally doing a vlog for our YouTube channel from the show. And so with that being said, I, you know, I'm going to get there a little bit earlier, do some stuff. And that reminded me how you and I were having a little bit of a quarrel, which maybe Brian can solve the argument of the day, AKA AOTD that we had, we had the other day. You were not a fan of like, when you go to a concert, right? You just go to the concert. That's it. You don't eat dinner ahead of time. You don't. No, I just go you to just, a You just get up and you go to the concert. Whereas, Absolutely. Whereas I like to enjoy myself. I like to go. The people around me usually want to hit up dinner ahead of time, and then we just casually stroll into the show on time, ready to go. So, with that being said, you have to leave a little bit earlier, and then we, a little bit earlier. And then we established that like there are people that tailgate at concerts, and you were saying no, people don't tailgate at concerts. They Not only, at your normal you said concert. You, you said maybe you at your Bon Jovi, maybe at your Jimmy Buffett, but not like at your uh, Halloween. You don't tailgate for Halloween. No, but I didn't say Halloween. You were telling me that nobody tail like you don't tailgate uh, at concerts. You said you tailgate at sporting events. You, uh, the, the fact that people tailgate at concerts is just ridiculous to me because tailgating should be reserved for sporting events. Mm -hmm. It just should. I'm just saying. So, yeah. So I wanted to bring that up because I, you know, I totally, I'm not going to argue the sporting event piece, but um, there's been a ton of concerts I've been to where people tailgate, you know, the first thing and they sit there and they drink the whole time, just like you would tailgate for a sporting event. And my, my, under, my thought is in both cases, it's entertainment. In both cases, you have the right to tailgate, go out and do it. And people do it all the time. Brian, I think people absolutely tailgate at some concerts. I don't think they tail. I think Moody's correct. They don't tailgate at all concerts. Like, I don't think people go out and tailgate to like a Beyonce concert or or like a Taylor Swift concert. I but, think they probably do more Taylor Swift. Um, 
because it's a huge stadium. Yeah, thing, but it's but I, mean, so I, don't, I just don't yeah. think for demographic or like tailgating, like yeah. like like a Dave Matthews Band concert mm-hmm. or like or like Jimmy tailgate. Buffett. You know, people are people are going to be tailgating yeah, like, at those, like a you know a rock festival, something like that. Yeah, like they're going to be shows, at club shows. I don't think people are going to tailgate necessarily. But yeah. is it wrong to want to go have a nice dinner before? No, I mean that's and, awesome. That's like a night out, and you, t- you make an event of it and. You, you yeah, so I'm not, wrong, I'm not in the wrong for doing. I'm not in the wrong for doing that. Yeah, no, not at all. Okay, just want to make sure I wasn't in the wrong. It, it, it it's not in the wrong when you go <clears throat> like five times, four times a year. But every show you go see twenty times a year. Oh, I got to leave at three o'clock. Oh, what, I got to leave at four what, o'clock. What show dictates dinner versus no dinner? Well, I'm saying is, is like if you're going to a show, you're going to want a dinner no matter what the show is. Right, but when you go during the weekend, then yeah, I understand. You can leave any time. But where you're in a work week, wouldn't you like the band be- picks the schedule? I have nothing to do with the schedule. I understand that, but if you're seeing fifteen to twenty bands during the week, you're gonna leave four o'clock, three o'clock for every one of them? You know we had a former boss that agreed with me on this one. No, but what I'm saying <laughs> Brian, is there something wrong with that? Like you know the schedule of this it doesn't. I don't pick the schedule. The schedule. The band this says. This is hey, more of a. Do you continually ask your managers at work to leave at three o'clock for a concert twenty times during the year because you need to go eat dinner before a concert? No, I think that's excessive. I think like if if you had like a work obligation and it was like a work day, like I don't think you can, like maybe once or twice or like every once in a while, but not like especially for like a a special show or a big show. But if you're going to see like, you know, kicks for the 20th time and it's <laughs> not their you. last no, show. No, here's the thing. For the, Some people you know, take a full you, day off for, to see for, kicks. For the record, 20 times is excessive. And I'm, and I'm not saying that like, that's not the case. Cause you got to think about it. The majority of the shows I go to actually really are weekends. There's probably, I'd say five in a year that are, on a Friday or, you know, a Thursday, a thir- or... Thursday or a Friday, you know, and that's, I don't think five is excessive. I don't think five is excessive. I, I don't think five is excessive, but I don't yeah. know if five is the number. No, it's about five. Trust me. The majority of them are weekend shows. Cause usually I'm the one going, Oh damn, it's on a Thursday. Cause I don't typically <laughs> like to do that. Cause I have this conversation <laughs> with you every time. Um, but no, it's typically, it's about five. And I agree if it was like every week and I'm like the guy who's going to shows every week, then yes, I agree. That's excessive, but it, five, it's not that bad. But I think the overall thing is, is it okay to eat dinner before you go to a yeah, show? Absolutely. Get a meal. You sit I nice sit down meal. I don't know why. What I'm I, I don't I don't why it would be. The he was telling me I should get McDonald's on the way. I mean, you could, <laughs> but. I'm like, why not just get McDonald's on the way? It's a concert. Like, I mean, you're going to see a band that you've seen a million times. It's not like a first time experience. It's not like. I've never seen Halloween before. Halloween? But, come on. I'm serious. I've never seen them. I'm. So you need to be well fed and rested and ready to go to see. Halloween. Why would I starve myself for Halloween? And like, what are we talking <laughs> you know about? Are we like, talking about like Outback? Or are we talking about like Morton Steakhouse? Like, what what are we talking like about? Like Outback. It's it's like Outback. People just want to have a sit down meal. Like, for, I'll be honest with you, I was sit trying to explain to him. Meal. Most adults coming from don't, the same guy who would eat. No, this isn't. Keep in mind, I'll eat McDonald's any day of the week. That's what I know. No, That's, my there's po- a deeper. No, my point is there's a deeper point. I'm to not this. going to the show by myself. Right. There are other people in my world, a lot that, of adults that don't like junk food. Like they consider fast food junk food, and they want to have a sit down meal. I right, don't but then when that. they get to said establishment, they order a high caloric, high salt, high fat. I don't think about the optics they- of it. And like, like for example, my wife is not a big fan of McDonald's, so she will eat McDonald's, but she's not like going out she'll never go out of her way to be like oh i want to go get a mcdonald's meal or she, you'll that'll never come out of her mouth like in most cases i prefer mcdonald's but the people that i'm with right. go i have the same oh, i don't want mcdonald's and i'm like okay right, but I, but I see for me this is a deeper rooted issue with the people that do the i don't want mcdonald's or mm-hmm. i don't want pizza or i don't want something quick i want a nice sit down restaurant meal mm-hmm because they think it's healthier, but yet when they order, they order the double bacon oh, cheeseburger with you know cheese. Yeah, fries. I don't think my You're wife thinks. Really it's... Salt, you know, they 
Go ahead. I, I would say like I don't think people like my wife think it's healthier. They just necessarily it's the atmosphere. The atmosphere. I think. She'd rather go to a um, restaurant that's nicer and has a real menu and you know. She doesn't want like in her car. Right. Real right, right. menu. Like what is McDonald's a fake no, menu? But, no, but it's they eating don't your put a menu in your hand have... and they don't you know come to your table and take your order. You know. Waiter. Oh, okay. You can't so get a glass boo. of wine at, right. at McDonald's. No, it's not bougie. It's regular people. Yeah, like, we're we're, we're talking. I'm talking like if we go to like. Slumming it. I don't consider McDonald's. Like if we go to Fridays or something. Like you know. She'd rather go to Fridays or like a local restaurant place. You know me. I'll take McDonald's over Morton's any day. Right. Like if you say Arby's or Morton's, I'm going Arby's. But what I'm saying is I know that I'm in the like I'm on the minority. I'm in the my own island on that because most adults, because it's a like like Brian said, clean. It's an optics thing where you don't you don't want to look like like they look at fast food as being for kids. So a person doesn't. So you don't have to pay a twenty percent gratuity on an overly priced meal. Yeah, that's what's awesome. Well, they look at like fast food as being like kids' food, not like adult food, even though we all eat it. So you pay fifty percent more for your meal, so you can have someone go over. Oh, can I take your order? Please? Yes, that's pretty much what they do. Wow, I'm I'm not saying it's right. Trust I'm, me, I go through the same thing with someone in my life. But if uh, like nothing would make me happier if like tomorrow like hey we're going to the show hey can we just hit McDonald's instead of actually going <laughs> I would be like yes let's do yes. that but unfortunately it doesn't exist in my world yes. everybody around me wants to go sit down somewhere COP we're going to McDonald's yes so um, anyway okay. So, um, folks, if you have thoughts on what we were talking about, I know I'm in a losing battle there. Everyone that might be in the right. I don't know. No, I mean, there are people that I mean, I think there are a group of people that would agree, but Mm. you always got it. They always default to the people they're going with. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, you've seen me eat McDonald's. You know, my (laughs) I've talked about it on my on the show so many times how much I love McDonald's. So uh, I'll I'll do that. I'll do fast food any day. Um, the other thing that, that occurred to me is I, I, so in YouTube, I watch a lot of YouTube, as you know, and I watch different people. And one of the guys I watch talks about music and stuff, and I'm not going to give names or bring that part up because it's not necessary, but the dude has a tongue ring. Yeah. He doesn't advertise it, but you can, when you're talking, you can see it, you can kind of see it. And I think it does distort what your normal voice would be because of it. And so it annoys me because I, I think about it going, A, no dude should ever have a tongue ring. I just think that's weird. And what I've also noticed is people with dudes with tongue rings are like, I kind of understand why they're getting a tongue ring, if you know what I mean. Right. Because they think it enhances all these things. But they're dudes that wouldn't probably get a lot of girls anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, dude, who are you fooling? Who, well, they're on. getting the dirty girl. But I, they're just schlubs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like Brad Pitt's not getting a tongue ring, and it's he like, doesn't need to. No, but He's it, Brad Pitt. No, but it's like if we got tongue rings, it'd be like, eh, I'm not getting a tongue no, ring. No I way, it's, it's too painful. I oh, I, it looks ridiculously painful. But I just think no dude, like I'm okay with the girls. But, I mean, a tongue here's ring. the thing. But is it? It doesn't really in. It doesn't really enhance your experience. It enhances the experience of the. Yes. person you're experiencing it, it, it enhances their experience which is why they go hey look at me i got a tongue ring ah. but it's like stupid i i think guys I'm not getting a tongue ring guys shouldn't get a tongue ring i'm okay if girls get a tongue ring that's me too fine. but i mean i don't i wouldn't make that that's almost cute and endearing but i mean but i, I agree with you but like they, there wouldn't be a price like gal gadot could say hey you can do stuff if you get a tongue ring and i'm going eh, i'll pass yeah so it sounds it 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 looks incredibly painful, and I have a decent really? tolerance for pain. You wouldn't be like, "Oh, awesome." No, I never get a ring? tongue ring. I don't care who. Not said. you. I mean, if she got a tongue ring, she got a tongue ring. That's awesome. I yeah, don't care. Okay. I was gonna say, I thought I misheard. She her. asked me to get a tongue. Oh yeah, ring. no chance. If Cindy Starfall walked into the studio right now and said, "Mooney, get a tongue ring, and we will have some fun." Nope. Nope. I wouldn't do it. It's I gotta too say, painful. even if Alana's asked me, I don't think I could do it. I like, couldn't. It's way too painful. Way it lo- too. It I looks it awful. It looks I would so ask her cool. if there's anything else I can do. Like, mm-hmm. what's the second thing you're yeah, asking? I was like, <laughs> but I'm like, maybe, like, maybe I could get somebody to numb my tongue. Like, figure out a way to like make it numb for five days or something. I'm sure and they then can. Do it. Yeah, I mean, like the dentist does it. 
I guess I would I would look into it. But I, I just think yeah. no dude should get a tongue ring. It's stupid. It looks dumb. You know, girls, you're fine to get it. Get them all you want. But when guys get it, it's just dumb. It's weird. It's creepy. Here's the other thing. I like too many. I like frozen drinks a lot, mm-hmm. like whether frozen uh, alcoholic drinks. I like mm-hmm. Slurpees. I like, you know, and I like really cold drinks. If it's metal of any kind, I'm assuming it's a metal. Yeah, it's like usually like titanium or something like right. that. Right, and and you, as you know, when you freeze or like a titanium steel, yeah. right? When you freeze a cold, but like a metal object, mm-hmm. that metal object becomes really cold and or really hot. So like it would pain your tongue even more. Like if I'm eating a hot steaming bowl of pho, mm-hmm. and like that, it, it gets some of the on the tongue ring there, mm-hmm. and then it like centers on that piece of my tongue, and now it's scorched. Mm-hmm. I don't need that. Yeah, it's a whole. What if I'm eating pizza and the cheese gets in? It? Like, no, I don't want to even know. Yeah, it's, that's, that's. It that's, seems like a world of problems. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, speaking of hot. Mailbag. <laughs> okay, folks, it's time speaking for mailbag. <laughs> Does she live in a hot mailbag. state? <laughs> she on the just, cover of. Uh, swimsuit or I almost, I literally, I was going to say, <laughs> you know, next year's cover of swim, yeah. you know. How old is um, Martha's 81? Your mom's it, it, going to be 80, 80 this year. Yeah. Next year's Sports <laughs> Illustrated <laughs> cover model. <laughs> um, mailbag. All right. Uh, sorry. You had to hit it twice. Hey, folks, it's time for mailbag. It's so nice mailbag. you had to hit it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. <laughs> so I knew you were going to say that. We have in my head. I'm saying, please don't say that. Please don't say that. <laughs> we have an email here from Space Coast Bill, and Boom. and he uh, he writes his subject as uh, no questions, just answers. He says regarding questions from the last show, Matt's on his own about the wingman conversation, and please no farts in the news. Damn. So that was the first part. Okay. So I'll let you comment on that and before we move on. Um, there are no farts in the news this week. <laughs> um, I thought it was funny. What do you want from me? Um, <laughs> folks, if you disagree with Space Coast Bill, farts in the news. <laughs> please write in. <laughs> I had the t-shirts already made. <laughs> farts in the news. All right. It's like, eggs in space. <laughs> uh, the Muppets. Okay. He goes on to say, uh, no, Mooney. Matt is correct. He's not. Seeing, I'm not seeing Book Club the next chapter. There are lots of movies that he doesn't see, mostly kids' movies, comedies, and romance. Currently in his theater, uh, that he doesn't plan to see are Road Rally Racers, which is a kids' movie, Fool's Paradise, which is a comedy, Love Again, which is a romance, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, which he says is a chick flick, Super Mario, and Book Club. He says, additionally, Blackberry is not in a theater near him, but he does want to see that movie. He says... Who does? Like, they love that. that looks awesome. He says... You know, just, oh, go ahead. Good. No, go ahead. I was going to say, what just occurred to me, and I think it's because I had that. Mu- I just made that Muppet, Muppets reference, Space Coast Bill <laughs> reminds me Don't of... Say it. Just in the Just in the emails, it's, it's only in the emails, you know... Like Sam the Eagle from the Muppets, uh, the know. newscaster guy who just walks out oh, and he's yeah. like, he's like, you all suck, and then he just goes right back into his room or whatever, you know. Uh, I like it just, the eagle. he's like Sam the Eagle. He just, you know, uh, Mooney, you're wrong. Matt, you're right. Everybody sucks. Boom. Like, Sam the Eagle. Only because I think his next email really is going to be, hey a holes. Start writing in because he did the one last week and right. nobody else wrote in. So it's like he's going to be like, you all suck. Sam Double Eagle. middle finger. <laughs> Sam, the right. uh, Sam the space. The seagull. He says he did see hypnotic, uh, which is a which he can't believe that Matt didn't mention because he believes Mooney loves Ben Affleck. Um, he says it's a rental movie, but it's not gr- awful, but not great. That's why I didn't mention it. Um, I've tried to stay away from the straight to videos. Um, not that I don't have some straight to videos, but it was one of those. If Affleck is in the movie and it's a straight to video, it's probably not worth bringing it up. Yeah, and that's kind of why I, that, I did see it though. I just didn't put it on there because was it good. No, I didn't see it. Oh, no, it, when I look at the new movies oh, you coming saw out, about it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I saw about it, but then it was like straight to video, and it's like. If it's 
Scott Affleck, it means he's probably only in it for five minutes because yeah, got it. normally it would be in the theaters. But Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms, yo. True. You know that to be true. <laughs> uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, that was a great email. Awesome. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Thank Space Coast. Let's go. Yeah, Space Coast. Co- I was going to say Sam again. <laughs> Space Coast, Bill. Um, and thank you for holding down the mail fort. Yes. And Others, you got to mail. You yes, got to email folks, in, please. please. Or re- leave comments on our YouTube. Where's Leesburg? Robbie isn't like. I know. Or, or JT. We've, there's, or, we haven't heard from Smorgie in forever. In forever. Yeah. People have disappeared. I know, right? Our subscribers have gone up, but people who write so they in listen, have disappeared. they just don't write in. Yeah, we need those people to start writing write in. Write in, please. Take five minutes. Whether it's to call me or Matt a butthole, oh. I don't care. I was going to say butthole, too. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> I don't know why. Butthole. So anyway, um, subfaxpodcast at gmail.com <laughs> or... Watch the, if you're watching this on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, make a comment on YouTube. Just leave a comment. We'll count it. Yes. We'll count it. It will be counted. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's time for movies of the week, folks. Um, awesome. First movie up, um, no chance I'm going to go see it, um, is what? Fast X. Why would you not see it? I jumped out on Tokyo Drift, and I think that was the third one. Yes, it, it was is. the third one. No, yep, there's no reason for me. I'm not a car guy. You know this. I, I know that. I don't care. And then I'm also a... I don't like to suspend disbelief too much. And these movies are so outlandish that they it's are. like they are beyond outlandish. Like, like if it's a science fiction superhero movie, I'll suspend disbelief all day long. But if you're trying to let me believe this is a real thing and then you show me all this crap, nope, I'm out. So it's got nothing for me. I'm never going to watch it. Yeah, I, I love them all. I, I mean, they're not, I mean, they're. Vin Diesel is an average actor at best. Paul Walker was an average actor at best. Um, you know, I mean, most of the cast, except for Ludacris, is average at best. Luda, I, I do like Ludacris. Yeah. Um, but the 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 scenery and the theatrics and the the action, it's wow it's just a wow experience as soon as you sit down like you could literally say i'm gonna give you ten dollars to go see this movie nope wow i don't understand I'm not doing it. it's super entertaining and you know i'm cheap i'll it's usually very take 10 entertaining bucks from anybody. I, I, that's why i go okay it's, it's entertaining as all get out and i know brian's going because he's a car guy i, I, like I have not gone to see one of these in the theater since probably the first one Oh, okay. Well, that's great. On video, I, they're just not that. They're I enjoy that's, them from the the crappy, stupid movies they are, but I I just I don't like them that much. No, oh, I okay. see them all. Fair enough. Okay, next movie up is um. This was weird. I saw the trailer and I didn't realize it was a sequel, so I didn't see the first one. But it's Buddy Games Spring Awakening. I believe I did see Buddy Games, and it's got Josh Duhamel, who no one likes. But it's it's basically a bunch of friends that have their own like, you know, games that they play like, you know, tag. You know, it was like yeah. that movie Tag, I think. Um, so apparently the first one must have been so good, well, good enough to make the sequel. And I'm not going to lie. It looks I watched the trailer for both movies, the first and the second. And it seems like I wouldn't go see him in the movie theater, but I I definitely watch him on like a Saturday or something. So I do actually want to see him um, because you know, it's it's just kind of like the Revenge of the Nerds, like yeah, it's it's Yoshi, like that, Yoshi, like like that kind of stuff, and it's like I love male competition, I guess when it's yeah. funny, when it's funny, and so I, I mean, I, I I thought I watched it. I, I mean, you probably I'll did because you've seen a bunch of just. So, I mean, so I know what's coming for the second. I think one. the problem is the fact that it's like headlined by Josh Duhamel. Yeah, that's you know? a he's a ugh. yeah. The second, the the last movie on the list of this week is. A movie that is a remake and should never be remade is White Men Can't Jump. It's with Jack Harlow, this this go-around, which 
I do not understand Jack Harlow to save my life. Yeah. He, he's like a rapper that everybody seems to know. He's, yeah. Why but, is he in it? But then, but, but there's no chance Jack Harlow and the other dude, I can't see his name, are even remotely going to be nearly as good as Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson. Absolutely not. There's no chance that's ever going to, like, Billy everyone Hoyle. Everyone they asked must have said no, because this is not the two people you would want to put in a movie. Like, this is going to be on Hulu, so it's not actually going to the movie theaters. That's but, why. But I still don't understand, like, who somebody in Hollywood said, you know what? Brain idea. We're going to remake White Man Can't Jump. I do like the idea of remaking White Man Can't Jump. There's no reason to. The two to. people that they put in there are awful. But there's no reason to remake it. The original holds up. The original does hold up. I agree. There's no reason. Out of, there's so many other movies. If you're going to remake them, remake them. This movie does not need to be yeah, remade. Yeah, okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, I did see Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Mm-hmm. Full seal of approval. Awesome. I mean, awesome. it starts off a little slow, but the end, like the last hour is outstanding. Well, just like this next person's videos, I've only seen a part of um, Guardians of the Galaxy. This is Cindy Starfall, and it's time for Mooney's Dugout. Love you, <laughs> Mooney. <laughs> You can't watch a full Cindy <laughs> Starfall movie in one sitting. No, you can't. <laughs> What's up, Cindy? <laughs> um, all right, two stories on the docket tonight, folks. We got the NBA lottery was last night, and the results are in. The San Antonio Spurs will have the rights to draft the seven foot two, 194 pound Frenchman setter named Victor Webb. Oh, well, sorry, Wem Benyama. Wem Benyama. We'll just call him Vic. Okay, Vic. Vic is good. Yeah. If I'm correct, the last time the Spurs had a number one draft pick, that was Tim Duncan. Yes. And also a number one pick, Robinson. Oh, boom. Ready to go. So they drafted both number one, and now this will be their third number one pick. Um, Victor or Vic, we'll call him. We'll call him well, Vic. Or VW. V -dub. V -dub. V -dub. Yeah, V-Dub. So, yeah, no, no. He's going to be, I, everyone says this dude is an unbelievable game changer. I will give you the hockey comparison. It's like Connor McDavid. Mm -hmm. I mean. He's like seven foot. I saw a couple of videos of him. But he can shoot him. threes. He can yeah. play in size inside he's a little thin mm -hmm. they need him to bulk out a little bit like um giannis mm -hmm. he's a little thin right now and that is a huge concern that he's going to be able to body up against the you know the nba players because you know in the in the mm -hmm. in france there's not a lot of big players it just it just reminded me there was a video of look at see look at that picture he is thin there was a video of charles barkley i think talking about um you know, getting pushed up against or whatever. And Shaq is like dying laughing because Charles Barkley is like telling the story. And he's like, if a guy comes up and is going to pound you, you just got to take the pounding. And he just kept saying stuff like that. And you can see Shaq just off to the side dying laughing. But to the point of you need a bigger presence, you know, this guy does. He's the, it, this dude's very thin. Right. No, like if he goes up against like a, a Randall or a LeBron or, um, I'm trying to think of some other big guys uh, or uh, Joe kick. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to get beat up. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's just not physically strong enough to mm -hmm. it, even Anthony Davis. He's not physically strong enough to play with these type of guys. He's going to need to gain weight Yeah, okay. and muscle. Fair enough. Um, the next thing, this is a really interesting concept because the college landscape keeps evolving. The, there is going to be a new EA sports college football game being introduced i think this year or next and the importance behind this is they are actually going to start allowing fbs players to opt in to use their image in the game so they can use their mm -hmm. you know they're they're going to have like a facial uh, face scan mm -hmm. like body scan so the players are going to be the, the the players you control are going to be 
most like the actual college player themselves. Awesome. So the, there's two uh, things they're thinking about with the fun, um, the revenue sharing, if you mm -hmm. will, with all the revenue that's going to come in because of the mm -hmm. fact that you're going to use real college players. There's the first proposal is going to be they're going to try and base it on popularity. So, mm -hmm. like, for example, if this game, uh, let's uh, Arch Manning. Let's say if Arch Manning has an unbelievable first year. Mm -hmm. And in the second year, he opts in. Are people going to buy the game because it's Arch Manning? Yeah, like, is he on the cover of it? Right. Of that's, a, you know, that's the thing. Caleb Williams, right? Mm -hmm. So is Caleb Williams going to get the most out of the revenue share because he's the consensus number one pick next year? Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of stuff they're discussing. If they can't figure out a way to say Caleb Williams led to more sales than another guy, then they're going to revenue share across the whole. I think honestly, the easiest way to do it is that just everybody's equal, even though it's not. You, I agree. There's they some should disparity, revenue share but everybody. it should be. You're lucky to be even in this realm. Yes. You, you you broke down that barrier, and good on you for doing that. Yeah. Everybody gets the same split. It's just fair. Absolutely, and that and that's where I'm on that camp too. Yeah. So. Uh, the other big thing that with this was there was a bunch of teams. There was about five or seven, I don't know. I mean, maybe they mentioned five, but there was a bunch of teams that weren't going to do it originally, but have opted in this time around. So Wisconsin, Northwestern, TCU, Tulane, and Fresno State. Like Fresno State's anything. Is Tulane something? No, like they're no, they're <laughs> nobody. Like they're yeah, nobody's okay. either. Like. I don't know why they made it so big of a deal last time. Like, why wouldn't you opt in? Yeah, it's You're, stupid. Take the money. Notre Dame still hasn't decided yet. That's pretty big. But, you know, Notre Dame is one of those schools that, like, prides itself on, like. Everybody likes money. That's. Take yes, the money. they do. Take the money, folks. Yeah, take the money. I agree. It's stupid. stupid if you don't. Yep. But that's, uh, you know. That's uh, the sports of the week. Boom. There you go. And up next is. Okay, folks, this is a huge week in music. Um, there's a ton of albums coming out all around, all across the board and different styles and all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to start off by no, mentioning. No, you mentioned them last week. Only because somebody farted in their show. Oh, don't read ahead, sir. Don't read ahead. Um, so this band um, I mentioned on the show last week because somebody farted in their show. I didn't think anything of it after that. And then all of a sudden, YouTube blew up with this band everywhere. And so I'm like, is it the algorithm? Is somebody, is my phone hearing me or is this a big thing? Right. Turns out they have an album out. It comes out this Friday. Um, the band is called Sleep Token. The album is called Take Me Back to Eden. And at first I was like, yeah, whatever, kind of garbage. And I'm not going to lie. I went down a sleep token rabbit hole. Uh, Love them. I spent this whole week listening to them. And no, uh, you did not. The thing I will say is there's no way, like I, you can't put them in a category. It's impossible to put them in a category because. Can you put them in a category of, I don't want to listen to them? They're not for you. I'm pretty sure they're not for you. Um, we could do a reaction of them, but I don't know they're for you. The weird thing is, it's a band from England. There's some like R&B, there's some pop, there's some soul, There, but then there's some like metal, there's some hard rock. So it's, it's so all over the place that I think the hard stuff is going to be too hard for the pop people. The pop stuff is going to be too poppy for the hard people. So it's kind of like, where do they fit? All I know is everybody keeps saying that, but at the end of the day, they still like them. So it's like, <laughs> I, I don't know where to put them, but I, for some reason it's good atmospheric music. I, I'm, I, <laughs> it is, it's, you put it in the background while you're working or something. It's fantastic. I will never listen to sleep Token oh, in it, my life. It's, I love it. So anyway, take me back to Eden is the new album oh coming out. Check them out the or, or not or not. Or hey, if you don't want to open your ears to new things, um, the next one is Lewis Capaldi. Who? He he, I follow him on TikTok. He does he did that song "Someone I Used to Know" or "Someone You Used to Know," but it, and so it was a huge hit like a couple years ago. This is his follow up album. He's like what I love about him is he's like us. He's like a Scottish version of us, but with Tourette's. 
But he's like <laughs> Red? No, the funny thing is he oh. like he like sells out arenas, right? But he's like a slob. He's kind of just like like that. And yeah. so he has no filter whatsoever. So if you follow him on TikTok, it's hilarious because he just he doesn't care. Like he knows he's like like an average Joe. And, right. and so even though he's selling out all these arenas, he's still no better. He's no whatever. He's at, he just Lewis Capaldi. I actually, okay. like I said, I like him on TikTok more than his music, but his music's not bad either. It's just not, it's not for me necessarily. Was he, did he win an American Idol or something? Or I think he did in like, in like Europe. He's like oh, Scottish, okay. but like, for the most part, he just has this like trajectory, but like an upward trajectory. But he's like the fat slob who knows it, and he's just awesome. like I said, he's hilarious. He, he does have Tourette's, um, but like he, that's crazy. It's but I know a lot of people. They say it, Tourette's people can sing because they don't think about yeah, it. Yeah, there's a documentary on him. Um, there's a documentary on him on I think Apple Plus or something like that. But he's like he's got all this he's got money and everything, but he's got like a roommate and like an apartment type of thing. So it's like, dude, it's pretty dope. Um, so anyway, Def Leppard has a new album. Nice. And you like Def Leppard. Not gonna lie, no one's gonna buy it. It's called Drastic Symphonies. It's basically they're reimagining their songs with a symphony behind No. You know, nobody's gonna buy it. Who's oh buying my that? God. No one. I I was like excited for a little bit. I like Def Leppard, yeah. but I don't want to hear a symphony behind their old music. I feel like they're just wasting money at this point. Um, Jesus. The next album is Ghost, the band we've done a couple of reactions to. They have an album called Phantomime coming out on Friday, and it's a covers album. And the first single that they've released is a cover of the Iron Maiden classic, Phantom of the Opera. Nice. Um, There's a chance we might do a reaction to it. We'll figure that out later. Um, But anyway, um, so good on Ghost. Um, Next one is Kesha. Kesha. She's got an album called Gag Order. And so... Um, Gag Order? Pete, Kesha's still putting out CDs? Well, Kesha had a big legal suit about um, a producer that, you know, a little touchy-feely, all that kind of stuff. And then I think she may have lost the suit. I'm not so sure, but I think the deal, she got out. I think the deal was he, he actually owned her, the rights to her, her music. Her rights. Yeah. And uh, she was claiming that he had sexually abused her and mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot of, I guess, evidence. And so it kind of died, unfortunately. And she lost the rights to all her music from. from yeah. Her, her so band. she's got a lot to say. Oh, wow. So she, she's got a lot of makeup. She's to got do. a lot of stuff to say. So this album is, is actually pretty anticipated because of the fact that, you know, people think, I think if, if you're, team kesha you can't wait for this album to come out because right. you want to hear you know inklings to what really went down type of thing or her thoughts on how things went down um then the worst band in the world um the dave matthews band uh, the has one an, band i actually will probably listen to the new cd has a band called walk around the moon i'm pretty sure it'll sound like every other dave matthews song the one band i actually might listen to the new album for other than the utter crap you just listed. You actually have a band that sells out fairly big arenas. And then you mentioned sleep token, Lewis Capaldi ghost and Kesha. I'm telling you this, Brian, you can back me up with this. No one cares about Dave Matthews band now. Absolutely. If you're do. talking about 1990s Definitely still selling out Nissan Pavilion. You said Def Leppard. No, Not Def Leppard. No, I mean, Dave Matthews. But no, because they want to hear the stuff from 1993. They don't want to hear the stuff now. Nobody cares about his music now. Can you come up with the last couple of Dave Matthews band albums? I no haven't chance. followed them in a long time. Exactly. I'm, that I'm my sure point. the Dave Matthews fans Name can. a recent Dave Matthews band song. No one song. can tell you a recent Dave. Like, find me a Dave Matthews song from 2010 I haven't and beyond. To Dave Matthews in a while. That's the point. I don't even know if they have new outlets. Exactly. Well, That's my, my point. No my one I cares. don't listen to anything. I know, but you're not alone in this case. No one what cares. I'm, if I were to listen to something, I might listen to Dave Matthews. And, and don't get me wrong. I love Def Leppard, as you know, but I'm willing to admit that this album is a big waste of time. It is based on what no you're saying. No one cares that Dave... I'm sure that people care that Dave put out a new CD. And... The rest of the band, maybe, but... 
not sure that there's many other people. You just don't like them. That's no, I think the people from like Virginia Tech who still like tailgate and they're like our age. Yeah, they probably care, but do they count? I think they're from UVA, people really? from, from Charlotte. Yeah, they are from UVA. I yeah. didn't. Oh, mean. UVA. Yeah, the people, the old, the old heads, as my son calls it, from U- UVA. <laughs> Trust me, I've been called an old head fifty million times. Um, <laughs> he went from boomer to old head. I'm not sure what I like worse, you know. You're an old head. Yes. Um, so anyway, um, that is the um That's a lot of music, music. this week. It That's is a lot. a lot of music. And like I said, I'm gonna be vlogging hopefully from the Halloween show tomorrow. Vlogging. So, so if everything goes according to plan, we'll put something on YouTube. It'll be my the very first vlog. Um, you won't be there, sir, because you'll be at the beach, but you'll be with me and f- we'll obviously Spirit. be doing future vlogs you know, together. So, um, yeah, so that'll be something to look forward to folks. Um, I have a TV one TV. Oh, um, I did start watching Netflix King of the collectibles. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So you're right. It's, I loved it. I watched all the episodes, but do you see what I mean? Like it's, it's awesome. Except for the production is kind of wonky. It's kind of cheesy. Yeah, production. There's is a little cheesy. bit of a cheese factor, but I'll give you that. Production is really. But cheesy. I love everything that I've seen because I like the collectibles. I like. I, I like the office that they're in. Like you know, mm-hmm. it's all these people that are looking to buy collectibles to mm-hmm. resell them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I um, I thought what I thought was amazing was the, uh, the Jordan jersey. The the Jordan rookie. jersey was good. The when they talked to Japan about the um Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards. Yeah. Right, and there was two Pokemon things. There was mm-hmm. the conversation with Japan, and then the the Phil, yeah, uh, the whatever that. Yeah, what's it was. called again? So people can go back and listen. King of the Collectibles. King of the Collectibles. Yeah, it's I, awesome. I like it. Like well, you gotta it's, like it's, you gotta be like me. You gotta like sports, and you gotta like collectible. Collectibles. <laughs> but yeah, but like I said, production wise, it's hokey. I think that's the only thing that throws me off a little bit is a little hokey, but but it is fascinating. I love it too. Um, but no, um, next week or May twenty third. Um, on Cinemax or it's HBO Max, but now they're just calling it Max, so you know what it is. Okay. Um, Gremlins: Secret of the Mogwai is a what? new TV series. Oh, it's, a TV yeah, series. Yeah, it's a t- TV series, and I can't wait. Of totally course, I'm going to watch it. One hundred percent going to be watching it. Um. Okay. I need a judgment call from you. I didn't do it, but in a work chat with a client today, mm-hmm. we were you know joking around, and then. Someone said, uh, it's, it's like feeding gremlins after midnight. And mm-hmm. I was like, mm, should I say something? Yeah, it's Mogwai. You should have said something. I should have said something. Yeah. See, you caught it right away. But you know, it's as soon as they said it, but the person I was talking to, they told me not to do it. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, you, when you feed a Mogwai after midnight, they're already a gremlin. You can feed a gremlin after a midnight. It doesn't make a difference whatsoever. You know, the sad thing is. This is once again weird. You know how we drink sing each other because we're yeah. sitting butthole together. Well, I similarly, I actually made that mistake today. I know it's a Mogwai, but I was talking about a family member to BK. Right. And I said, this person's a complete gremlin. You know, I said, you don't understand. And he goes, I, and I just said it casually. And he goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. What? And I was like, what do you mean? Gremlins. And he goes, Nope, I don't even know what a gremlin is, and I'm like, <laughs> "How do you not I was know like, what a gremlin is?" We saw it together in the movie theater. I remember <laughs> it. He doesn't remember. He was like, and I go, you know, there's all those rules, you know, yeah. can't feed him after midnight, can't get him wet. I said, this person's like a gremlin, and I did say, tech, I did, I go technically a mogwai, but since he didn't know gremlin anyway, he was right. just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're on your own. And I, and I was looking around. I was like, "Look, somebody, please back me up." But there's nobody else, obviously, on the phone with us. That's, That's where I needed it. Brian. You know, like so many times I'm talking to somebody and I want to go, "Hey, Brian, am I wrong or am I right?" right. But yeah, Brian was not there to be able to. So she said not to correct, and I'm, I'm like, "Because you can get a gremlin wet and they reproduce. That's fine." Yeah. Right. And then yeah. the bright light hurts the gremlins too. Yeah. But the only thing that I wanted to argue with is feeding a mogwai after midnight. Turns into a gremlin. Into a gremlin. So it's it, you can't if feeding a gremlin after midnight doesn't mean anything. No, you're right. So technically, there is two rules with gremlin. But who wants to own a gremlin? Although, but then again, we don't really. 
did they clarify, and I don't know this to be true or not, did they clarify that if the gremlins eat after midnight, don't they just get more wild? Like, could it be them high like or drunk? Like, a, a gremlin already, but... No, 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 no. Like, on maybe, meth or maybe, something. Maybe, they never clarified, but a mogwai turns into a gremlin when you feed it after midnight. Now, I would have had mad respect for the person if they said... Well, sir, I'm going to counter that with you're you are wrong because a gremlin can eat after me. You know what I mean? It'd be funny if they just. I don't think it gets any you. worse. I mean, I mean, mm. it, because the they're already that way. Like the white stripe Mogwai was the one who stripe stripe. He was the one who set the clock or whatever to not move, so it read the same clock time yeah. when they fed him. But that was just being smart. But there was a bunch of other gremlins that just had were par- stupid were hell, partying yeah. like a champ. Yeah, they were dumb. while Stripe was doing the smart stuff. So maybe yeah. they were the ones eating after. Yeah, midnight. maybe could be. I don't know. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, Gremlin Secret of the Oh, Mogwai I can't wait. That's awesome. Coming news. out May twenty third on Max. We will all be there to see it. So awesome. I think I think we've said it all. I think we've we've we have we've said everything we need to say for this week. So, um, folks. Oh, we didn't uh, talk about the um, the homework assignment. Oh yes. Would you like to explain the homework assignment? Yes, I was. Um, the article it didn't do it justice, which always happens on Facebook link articles, and it gets me crazy. But the the article link was talking about like best horror movie posters, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting there going, "Oh, okay, cool. Let me click the link." And then I get in there, and it was like best like screenshots from a, like a horror movie scene. I'm like, "That's not a poster. No, it's definitely not a poster." But then I was saying that would be a cool thing to do: best movie posters. Mm-hmm. And not just horror movies, because some people just may not like posters. horror movies. What are the five best movie posters out there? So question, if we're going to actually do this and we're going to do the legitimate top five movie posters, you know how we always have to go like not Stallone? Do we have to go like not Rocky? Or can we have Rocky? I, think have, I don't think be... Rocky's that great of a poster. What? What? The, whoa, the, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, hey, it's just him hey, standing there, right? Down. What? Whoa! Like I th- what did did he did he I say something? Does he understand? Like, like there's actually a statue with that, but the, it's actually like I'm, in Philadelphia. We've did the am, poster. Am I losing my mind? We actually did lived he just the say it's sir. not that good. The the poster that like we're talking Rocky the, one or Rocky two. What? Oh, it's Rocky. Then there's Rocky two. There's no Rocky one. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave. I'm having an emotional. Breakdown. I think Brian's trying to end the show fast. <laughs> He's like, I'm on a time frame. I'm gonna piss Mooney off big time. <laughs> yeah, but you could argue Rocky four is probably the oh, best. God, I mean, yeah, Rocky four poster is up there too. Yeah, I I will allow Brian to put Rocky in there if he wants. He should, but I'm not gonna put one in there because I love all the Rocky posters. Agreed, but I think Rocky four. In Rocky, the original are the two best. They are. I'm not going to argue there. So, but I'm not going to put him in my top five because it's. I'd rather go independent of Rocky, just like we've always. So that okay. So for in, me, at least, in, and you independent of Rocky. Okay. Someone else can put it out but there. But you guys aren't wrong if you went all Rockies for your top five. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't be wrong. I wouldn't argue with anyone. Probably can't argue with them. So, um, I anyway. mean, but they're like the Indiana Jones posters are great. A lot of the, you know, a couple of the Friday the 13th posters are great. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street poster. um, Like, even Big is a good poster. Like, it depends. I mean, do you want it more abstract? Do you want it, like, full of stuff? The Goonies poster is solid. The Goonies poster is probably going to be in my top five. Could be. Um, I think you're giving too many examples. I know, right? Sorry. Well, there's so many movies out there. There's so many movies. You can really do what you want. Um, Yeah, okay. Top five movie posters, folks. Write into subfactspodcast at gmail.com or leave a comment. In, if you're watching this via YouTube, leave a comment. We'll count it as mail and we will read it next week. Awesome. Boom. Okay. Um, yeah, you yeah, will read it as mail. Just put it in the comments. Even if you mention three or four, you don't need to do five. I don't care. No, do five. All right, do five. All yeah. right. The, the one percent is spoken. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, all right. All music, all tech support for Subbacks is provided by our friend Andy from Creative Underground. He runs a state-of-the-art production studio 
in our hometown of Leesburg, Virginia. You and me and everybody can find out more by going to his website, but that's not where it ends. Creative Underground offers a huge variety of services. He does video live stream events. He does youth sports, corporate events, weddings, concerts, pro karaoke, or, or if you just need the best local video and tech guy around, please give him a call. It's Andy at Creative Underground. Just go to his website, www.creativeunderground.co, not .com. Also, um, he, he's still looking for if you're a session musician and you play an instrument and you're in the Leesburg or Northern Virginia area, please reach out to him at www.creativeunderground.co, not .com. How was that for us? That Where's was that? awesome. And I, and I picked up on it. I know, right? Normally I fail that. Yep. And up next is Ben from KStreetPhotographyDC.com. Um, Ben's an award-winning image builder and FAA certified pilot of drones, specializing in commercial real estate marketing, business headshots, personalized business branding, imaging, corporate events, team imaging, all of the things that I can't say at the moment because I have a mumble mouth. <laughs> and, uh, basically, if you need a photographer or someone who deals with like just taking the best photos imaginable, you got to call Ben. And I will say that's the only thing wrong about the Martha Stewart um, Sports Illustrated is it ben was not better. Ben would have made it better. Ben, like Martha should have known Ben's your boy. And he could and he could have done like drone scenes yes. with Martha Stewart. Would that's great. That's what I'm saying. Like. Sports Illustrated, what is your problem, folks? You could have called Ben from K Street Photography, DC.com. I do have a request. Uh, Brian, can you look into to see if uh, Martha Stewart does have behind the wall, like, bake uh, pizza ovens and air fryers? Sure. Because I would really like I'll that. look into that. She probably has her own brand of those. <laughs> Don't think she does. You know she's got a pizza oven. It's a lock. She has a pizza oven. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, oh, by the way, I've been hyping this guy up because I have a couple of friends who drive um, like the Dodge Ram uh, Raptor trucks or not the Raptor Dodge Ram something or other. Um, mm -hmm. But they're the, you know, 100K trucks. And mm -hmm. I was like, dude, like you got to protect it for the summer, like these long rides in the rain. Mm -hmm. I said, you got to call my boy BK at Big Dog Auto Detailing. I said, he'll do a ceramic for you that will knock your socks off. And it'll protect your car forever. Like, for what, five mm -hmm. years? I'm telling you, if you want your car, vehicle, boat, uh, trailer, anything you drive to look like new and to protect it forever, give Big Dog Auto Detailing a call. 571-233-8716. Tell them Subback sent you. And make sure you call ASAP. And feel free and remind him what a gremlin is. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, if, if you say... Like, I don't know how that's possible. Just... Oh, my God. Imagine, like, if he did a 10% like off, if well, you say gremlins. When I, you call I, I will say BK has lived a life. I know, but it's... as big as gremlins was in the 80s when he would have been, like, of age to, like, pay attention yeah i'll tell you this there's he sat next to me in the theater when we saw it by the way gremlins is as big as goonies no no doubt it was huge when oh, it came out yeah, yeah. i don't doubt that i'm not doubting if you it. know goonies you should know gremlins i'm just saying he's lived a life so there's a lot of things maybe it just slipped out but anyway what is that replaced by how do you forget gremlins we, he told stories about partying with Jay Z and all that. Like stuff, I even so. like I even remember the actor when I was Zach Gall Zach Gall Gaffigan. <laughs> Almost. By the way, I had to. It's, it's Zach, I caught myself. Not I was gonna, but I was going to say that Gaffigan and then We're close um, Galligan. Uh, Galligan and then Phoebe Cates. Yes, Phoebe Cates. I saw. You Zach, can't forget Phoebe. Cates. I saw Zach, No one can forget no, her. I saw Zach Galligan at a um, at a signing event he was just by was me. he last starfighter too is that him no last starfighter was a different dude oh, okay but i love last starfighter too solid what? they could remake that right now and it'd be fantastic because <laughs> the game strategy like the, the games have gotten Star that much better Fighter, you want to make why wouldn't like brian <laughs> am i wrong no 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 you're not wrong dude last starfighter remake would be solid I, based I, on the. i don't think anybody play. would care i think everybody cared about that movie then because it was the first movie that used computer graphics in the movie, yep. 
But the fact that he like the the people from space came down to get yeah, him. To I guess I can see that. He was so good at the game. The game was just a test. The problem is, is it would have to be like Call of Duty or something, and not oh, not a space. But that's game. what I'm saying. You can use any of the oh. RPG games today. Yeah. I want to know if Brian's interested in that uh, one movie. I don't know if you you haven't mentioned it yet because it's probably not coming out for a little bit, but. I think it's called Gran Turismo. Oh, I saw that. I saw a trailer for that. Do you want to see that, Brian? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably wait till it comes out on video. Yeah. Okay. It's a. It basically it's about one of these. Arcade. Not. Uh, sorry. He's like it's, an. It's uh, based in a, in a video game Formula One driver. Okay. It's, yeah. And they actually need. They recruit him to be an yeah, actual it's like, driver. It's, it's, it's like actually based stuff. and loosely on a, a true story. Oh, okay. And, and I didn't know that. Where this this one got kid, he or young adult, he. Ended up winning like this esports uh, driving simulator game competition, and then they tried him out in a real race car and found out he actually had real life skills because of he knew the track so well. Boom! Awesome. Man. Okay, so now to plug us, unless we have to start everybody else's plugs again. <laughs> um, if you want, if you like what we're doing, um, and you haven't already. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. Whatever platform you're listening or watching us on, any kind of subscription is always fantastic. We prefer the YouTube kind, um, it, but either way, everything like works. And subscribe. Make sure you tell your friends, all that kind of good stuff. Um, let's see if we can blow this thing up. If you want to learn more about us, go to our website, subfactspodcast.com. Um, if you want to pick up some of our merch, that's Do where, that. you, that's awesome. where you're going to go. Um, if you want to learn more about us, subvaxpodcast.com. Um, but more importantly, please save Space Coast Bill that he's not the only one that yeah, writes in. Yeah, come on, write in, folks. Subvaxpodcast at gmail.com. Very, very easy to do. We read yeah. everything, so you know it's all good. Um, or leave a comment on our videos, and we will count that as well. Um, under the real show, not the reaction videos, because that's too there's too many yeah, comments, too, yeah. so it doesn't count. Um, once again, subfactspodcast at gmail dot com, and I've already said it. We're everywhere. If you are listening to us, please tell your friends and tell them how you listen to us, and get them on board. Be a part of the subvax family. Blow it up! Blow it up! Boom! Okay, I think we've said it all, and everybody stay safe. Stay we will see you next week. Boom. Stay up.